Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another of Max's tech tips. If you are just joining us now, I do a tech tip on the channel not all that often, just kind of as topics come up, but I've done enough of them that there is a playlist which I will link for you right up there if you want to go get all caught up. And for today's tech tip, we're going to be talking about pipe thread sealing, and specifically in this case, NPT pipe thread sealing, that is National Pipe Taper. And if you are unfamiliar with the whole topic at hand here, there's probably at least 20 different standards for sealing pipe threads out there, 20 different approaches. But I would say 99% of the stuff that those of us at home or in a mechanic shop are going to see are going to be NPT at least on tools and in the building and stuff like that. Some cars will have O-ring fittings, you know, like power steering lines and stuff like that. And for those, you don't have to take any kind of particular care to seal them as that's what the O-rings and stuff are there for. But these guys are a different story. And if you have never heard of NPT threads before or any other pipe taper, there are a few different ones, as I said before. What that literally means is that the threads are tapered. I think you'll be able to see when I hold that up against the square that those threads go on a taper. And their corresponding holes also have a taper. You'll have to excuse my fancy artwork as usual. So we have our pipe male portion up here. So this guy going into a female portion that has a taper. And as these things become closer, there's eventually a point where they become you know, parallel and tangent and so you basically just jam them together to seal them. But the problem with that is even though they are jammed together to seal them, we still have a spiral leak path around the outside of these things just because they have threads. No matter what you do, the threads that are cut on these things are always going to have small leaks in their teeth unless we do something about it. And to demonstrate that principle, I've got this super duper long air chuck here that I have assembled with no thread sealer between the fitting and the chuck. So I've just put these together raw put one of these in here the way it is and gotten it as tight as you likely should and i'll just plug it into some compressed air here and you will be able to hear it leak we'll get mr fuzzy over there so maybe you can hear it a little easier so although these threads are designed to be basically self-sealing they're an imperfect seal so we need to do something to keep them from leaking like that and there are two general schools of thought about doing that. One of them is what is called Teflon tape or PTFE tape. And the other is Teflon pipe compound. Both of these kind of have the pros and cons, but these days I'm more gravitating toward the compound just because I think it's easier to use. But I'll show you how to apply both of these and how they work and what we're looking for. So let's start with Teflon tape because this is the one that seems to give people the most trouble. And the reason for that is because it matters which way you apply it. First things first, I was not a very good boy the last time I used this stuff and I left a stray end of it, which is pretty much always standard. And we would prefer not to have that. So I'm just gonna cut a nice even end. And when I say it matters which way you apply these, it's because if you apply it backward, when you go to thread this in, it'll actually just push the tape up the threads. So what I've found to be the easiest way to do this is to put the fitting in my left hand as if I'm going to screw it into my chest, put the tape in my right hand, and just put it on there and start it up. And this stuff, by nature of being Teflon, is pretty slippery. So the first coat is kind of hard to get on there sometimes, but it's not a big deal. And we usually only need to go around, I would say maybe twice, maybe three times. Because as I showed you before, it's actually the thread geometry itself that's doing our sealing. And we're just using this guy to kind of fill things in. So now you see that when I take this in my hand and I thread it like that, I'm actually taking the tape and pushing it deeper in the threads. If I were to do this backward, it would take the tape off. So that's a strong disadvantage of this stuff right off the bat, is that you have to put it on the right way. Another disadvantage with this stuff, although I've never personally had a problem with it, is that you can pretty easily get excess Teflon tape over the whole of this thing and risk blowing that free tape out into whatever thing you're trying to operate. So you wouldn't want a piece of tape from this blowing into your die grinder or your tire gauge or a piece of industrial equipment or something like that, because that would be bad. So a lot of people don't like this stuff for those two reasons. I've kind of gone away from it just because it's harder and takes longer to install than the goop. But since we are here, we'll go ahead and use that and install that properly into this guy. And pretty much every pneumatic tool you're going to find, at least in the United States, you're going to want a 5 8 wrench for your big end. 
and a 9 16 wrench for your fitting. A little trick dear old dad taught me is you want to just use one hand when you do this and turn the wrenches opposite each other for which direction you want to go. So right now I've got these set up in a loosening configuration. So when I squeeze my hand, it's going to turn the fitting counterclockwise. And this is much easier than trying to mess around with two hands to do it. So I just squeezed a little bit there. My fitting is now loose. So we'll buzz him on out of there. We will put our taped up guy in it. Now I'm going to put my 9 16 on under this. I'm actually going to do it the other way. Now when I squeeze them together, I'm going in the tightening direction. And that feels like it's probably tight enough. And if they leak when you're done, you can always go back and tighten them up. But once you crack this fitting, you've cracked the fitting and it's over. So speaking of leaks, let's plug our guy in and see how I did. Sounds good to me. I don't think we have any problems. That's going to be an effective pipe joint for us in the future. Speaking of cracked fittings, they say cracked kills, and there's no doubt that is absolutely true on your air fittings, and I've done put one on the rock for sure. Don't know if you'll see it or not, but there is just a little hairline crack on this guy that I gave it when I was installing this fitting because I got overzealous with it. In this case, this is not a huge loss. This was like, a, I don't know, a $3 Chinese air chuck. If you've never seen one of these before, the idea is that these clamp onto a tire, so you can just put it on and clip it on. So if you've got one that's all the way down, then you can dump air to, into it easily or if you have a giant tire like the tires on my jeep are huge so it's nice so you don't have to hold it there the whole time but all the same i do like having one of these and this one doesn't do me a whole lot of good so what i have done is bought a brand new made in usa milton air chuck that mimics this walmart generic one in fact it looks like they're pretty much a direct copy but i'm hoping the milton is a little higher quality and i'm also hoping i'm a lot less stupid when i go to install a fitting in it but the first thing we need to do is get our old fitting out of this guy because this is also a made in usa milton air fitting and it is pretty expensive so we don't want to just throw them away if we don't need to and there's nothing wrong with it in the case of this thing it's a weird size as compared to a lot of other stuff and it's just the way it goes this one happens to more or less fit a three quarter inch wrench it's not perfect but it is what it is might be metric but let's see if we can get her broke on free same way we did the last one and that actually wasn't even that tight so i'll take the blame for cracking the fitting but it may not be my fault it may just be a poor quality part so there's our guy out of there and this one i did pipe dope when i put together so we should probably make some sort of effort to clean the old pipe dope off although truly i don't know that we need to but i will try so i'm just going to start with a regular old paper towel and see how far that gets us and at a glance it looks like not real far as always, it is important to drop stuff as much as possible, preferably where it rolls under something, and absolutely where we can't see it. But we got our fishing rod out and managed to find it. So now we do have stuff to clean off of it. All right, so I've got most of it. I'm going to take this plumber's brush, and if you haven't seen these before, the idea is these are normally used for prepping copper pipes before you sweat them together, but they work great for cleaning up air fittings and stuff too. So I'm just going to shove the fitting down in there and see if we can get a little more out. Eh, not going awesome for us. Let's try one of the ends. Also really not going awesome. Again, I don't think we need to do this. I'm just kind of curious at this point how hard it is to remove this stuff. And just for fun, let's take a little brake clean to it and see. I would say the brake clean cleaned that up pretty nicely. I don't really see a whole lot of traces of it left behind. So we're gonna say that's good. And the next thing we're gonna need to do is get our new hotness opened up. There we go. Specifically made sure to wait on that so I didn't throw the wrong one away. Let's see if we got lucky and our three quarter inch wrench fits it. It does. And look at that. It fits it a whole lot better too. Still not awesome, but better. Let's take a dry run on our thread to make sure everything's fine. Feels pretty tight already. If there's any kind of burrs or anything down in there. I don't see any. I think there's anything on our threads. Let's try it again. Yeah, it feels mostly okay, but I'm just going to run it in a little by hand just to get a better feel. Yeah, that's pretty freaking tight. I'm going to grab another fitting and make sure there's not something wrong with this one just to play it safe because I would really like to not break two of these in a row. Another fitting. Nope, they're both about similarly tight. So we are going to run with it and assume that's the way it is. 
Putting this stuff on is about as easy as you'd think. It is kind of messy, which is probably the main downfall of it. I'm just going to stir it up because there's like some oil in it that kind of separates out. And this is sort of the same as the Teflon tape. It does not take gallons of the stuff and we don't want to get any in the end of it. But the nice thing about it is we don't have to be overly intelligent about how we install it. You just paint it on. So there we go. I've successfully applied probably way too much of it to this thing. I am going to take just a quick minute to wipe the face off and make things a whole lot worse while I do. All right, that's pretty much close enough. Get her threaded in. And this stuff claims that it seals immediately, but I normally like to let it sit overnight. For the purpose of the video, we probably won't. We're probably just going to hit it right off the bat. Again, I'm using my kind of one hand approach here as much as I can. All right, that feels plenty freaking snug. Take my paper towel, wipe my excess off because the stuff on the outside doesn't do any good. And in fact, the stuff on the outside will create messes for you. After a little while, it'll kind of gum up. And after many years, it probably just turns hard, but not today. Let's plug it in and see how it goes. That was actually leaking out of the end of it because it's brand new, probably just wasn't seated. I don't hear anything. Hold it up to the mic for you guys. Sounds good to me. So that is another effective pipe joint. It's my opinion that if you have a whole bunch of tools you're doing, like recently I went through and replaced all the fittings on my air tools with Milton fittings because I got tired of all the junk ones leaking. So all of these and all these are now all Milton made in USA and I've been happy with them so far. But I found if you're doing a whole boatload of these that the joint compound is much, much faster. <laughs> that you can just put 10 fittings out and grease them all up and slap the stuff together and off you go. So that is what I've become accustomed to doing. However, one of the last ones I did in Teflon tape has always been a leaker. So let's get that fixed right quick since we're here. And now that I look at it again, I think maybe that might actually be joint compound and maybe I didn't use enough or maybe I didn't get it tight enough. But this is my industrial length air blow gun. This thing's like five feet long. So it's kind of hard to show you all in this shot. But you can see there's like no place to put a backup wrench on this thing. So I was probably just taking it pretty easy when I put it together. But I'll throw some air on it and show you how it's leaking. Hold you up to Mr. Fuzzy. I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to hear that. It's leaking pretty significantly. I wonder if I can almost just tighten that up. Let's try it. Nope, that's pretty freaking tight already. So let's pull that guy apart, get the fitting cleaned up, regoup it, and see if we can get it fixed. Since there is nowhere to put a wrench on it, I'm just going to try and pin it down with my forearm while I take the fitting out. Yeah, and this is Teflon tape. And that's cool because I was hoping to be able to show you guys how to clean off old Teflon tape. And yeah, it almost looks like there's basically none on it. Maybe I just did a really crap job here. Well, we know I did a really crap job because it leaks. But let's get it fixed. Teflon tape with the wire brush works a lot better. Particularly, it works a lot better if you use a powered wire brush, such as like on a bench grinder or something. But we're just going to do it manual. Yeah, there's basically like no Teflon tape on that. I don't know what I was doing. Anyway, all the same, we've got our fitting all cleaned up. And I'm going to pipe dope it. I was kind of hoping to show you a better example of how to clean this crap off. But since I didn't put any on it the first time, kind of counterproductive. And I'm sure I've just painted the whole end of it over again. Yep. One of the things with the camera being able to see better than I can is we do stuff like that. All right, so I think we're good to reinstall now. Should not be any big deal. Just get her threaded in. I wonder if I took it easy on the tape on this because I had already cracked that other fitting by the time I did this and this gun was kind of expensive, so I was just being a wuss. Don't know. But I certainly don't want to break this gun. All right. That feels plenty tight. As you saw, I wasn't reefing on it or anything. And you also saw we've got plenty of thread sealer in it now. Let's see if she continues to leak. I don't believe so. Let me give it the old ear. Give you the old mic. Oh, she is all good. Perfect. So believe me, I know this is not the most exciting video in the world for a lot of the guys out there that have been doing stuff for a little while. 
but the educational level on my channel, or at least in YouTube in general, seems to be widely varied. So there are a lot of folks that have never owned an air compressor, never bought an air tool in their life, and are just buying their first stuff, and they don't know how any of this stuff works. And I'm completely happy to cater to those kind of people and make these kind of short little videos. And in fact, I'll give you just a quick demo if you've never used one of these quick disconnect style fittings. And I think these are all type M. There are many different types. There are many different sizes. Almost everything you're going to see is going to be quarter inch and I think type M. If I'm wrong, I'll throw a note in the video about that. That means you have a quarter inch air path. I believe these are quarter NPT. And they all, for the most part, interchange with each other as far as what you can plug in. So if you buy a fitting from one company, it should work with a fitting from another. But the way these work is there's a collar on the end that you pull back, you put your air fitting in, you push it in. These Miltons are nicely spring-loaded on the inside. And these are all brand new, so they've never been put together before, so they're a little stiff. And the idea is that you would then release the collar, except again, there we go, a little stiff because they're brand new. And I don't have any leverage because there's nothing screwed into these. But that's how they work. And then to get them apart, you just pull the collar back. Usually when there's air pressure in here, stuff will just kind of pop off. I'm betting this one will pop off just from spring tension. Yep. So a little spring in there just shot it out. I'll give you maybe a little better demo with the real deal. So this is attached to an air hose that has pressure in it. Pull the collar back. Here's one of the fittings we just installed. Push them in. Let go of the fitting. That's it. Pull the fitting back. Your thing comes out. Really straightforward, it's a really great system. Been around forever. There are other systems a lot of guys like. I like these just fine. If you're just getting into stuff, I recommend you set your tools up this way so you can take them wherever you want and almost certainly be able to run them. Also, if you're just getting into stuff, you may be tempted to just buy the fittings they have at Harbor Freight or Home Depot or whatever because they are cheap. They are also junk. These Miltons are probably the fifth set of fittings I have bought in my life because all the Chinese ones eventually wear out or start leaking. And you can take these apart and replace the O-rings and stuff in them and rebuild them. But on a Chinese one that's like $1.50, it isn't worth your time to do it. Plus, I noticed a lot of the time they would start wearing down the actual metal, and there's not much you're going to do about that. The Milton stuff isn't that expensive. I like it. There are other good brands that you can go buy. But if you're just getting started, I suggest you spend some money on good fittings, because those should be with you for many, many years. Whereas an air tool like this guy, which is a piece of junk I paid like six bucks for, I never expected to make it 20 years, but it did. So if you're on a budget, I suggest you save your money on the tool for now, but spend the money on the fittings because you'll be reusing these over and over and over. And there's a high likelihood that as you use your air tools more and more, that you're going to have stuff leaking nonstop if you don't spend money now. And it's just a super huge annoyance to hear this stuff hiss nonstop. It drives me insane. So anyway, guys, as I said, not the most exciting subject in the world, but one that I needed to cover because I needed to get some stuff done. I thought I'd share it with you. If you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist for the other ones. And as always, I appreciate you stopping in, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.